Hey guys, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. I love a good Vegas documentary. I love to learn, I love to hear different perspectives, and I love to get behind the scenes visuals. Nothing makes me happier than learning how my favorite things tick. Strategies, schematics, I love it all. So, you can imagine how excited I was when I learned about the Fox reality show called The Casino. As a young man, I'd seen some bits and pieces, and the occasional episode, and I remember it being pretty cool. I learned a lot about how the casino floor works, and even some of the marketing techniques that they use. In fact, that's how I was first introduced to Richard Wilk. On television, of course. I'd meet him on YouTube many years later. And honestly, I was really hyped about taking a fresh look at this series from beginning to end. Now that I'm a Vegas veteran, and I have a frame of reference for how these things work in the real world. So, let's check out the inner workings of a real Las Vegas casino, the Golden Nugget. This is the casino. Is the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. This is the most nerve-wracking thing. I think they're going to start grilling me immediately about mob allegations and organized crime. My known associates file. Our documentary opens up on two businessmen walking into an inquiry. These are our protagonists. Tim Poster is a Vegas local, and Tom Breitling is his best friend from college. They invented Travelscape.com, though we call it Expedia nowadays now that they've been bought out, and they are currently multimillionaires. Uh, Tim and Tom, not so much Expedia. Having made their fortune in Las Vegas, they decided they should go and keep the gravy train a rolling by purchasing their own Las Vegas casino. What could possibly go wrong? But a real gambling joint, the Golden Nugget, in downtown Las Vegas. So, it's worth noting that there was a documentary special put together for this show as a bit of a prequel, really, where Tim and Tom ran around and tried to get funding for their licensing hearing. It's worth a watch and focuses on some of the more technical aspects as well as some of the financials. Just be confident. Just tell your story. It just feels like I'm going to the electric chair. But anyway, a part of the hearing is to figure out whether these gentlemen are Las Vegas Gaming Control Board material. No criminal records, good credit, all that jazz. That's where they're checking. They've got everything sorted out, and even some of Tim's involuntary mob connections are all figured out as well. So now they just have to convince the Gaming Control Board that their entire team of five executives with absolutely no gaming experience should be allowed to run a historic property in downtown Las Vegas like the Golden Nugget. And none of them, as I understand it, have any gaming experience either, is that correct? Yes, sir. So in effect, your board of directors is going to be made up of five rookies in the gaming business. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Yes, sir, you're, you're correct. The focus here is on the drama and not so much of the absurdity of that statement. But, hey, in Tim and Tom's defense, they practically built an entire market of travel tourism. So who knows? Tim and Tom might have a good plan up their sleeves. Motion carries unanimously, gentlemen. Uh, with those changes, uh, the license applications have been approved as modified in the motion today and is no limited problem. to the individual licensees. The motion passes, and Tim and Tom earn their license. A probationary license, so of course they have to play things perfectly. I suspect every episode of this will be a close call with the license being pulled. Just judging by the way the whole thing is framed up. We then make our way down to the titular casino, the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. We start with a tour and a few tidbits about who's allowed where, then some glamour shots of money, tight narrative on the feelings, not so much the technicals. We're really starting with the improvements to change the look of the hotel casino. Okay, so far it's a first episode and probably just designed to ease the audience into it. I'm not so angry about that. No worries. I can survive some glamour shots and remodeling. I learned about the count room and I'm having fun. And, oh wait, what are we cutting away for? Here we go, here we go. Woo! Nice! Guys, you guys ready? Thank you very much. Woo! As in, one, two, three, 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 three. Uh, frat pack? Yeah, this is gonna be a problem. Alright, so these college kids show up, and now apparently we're gonna be focusing on them instead of the owners. Why are these guys getting screen time? What do they have to do with running a hotel? Also, these frat boys cannot speak English. Rob doesn't know it, but we're actually gonna throw a hotel party in his favor. His honor, his favor? In his favor. Not sinful and not in the fun Vegas way. 
professional tennis player Andre Agassi shows up for some reason to invest money, I guess. Will we return to this? I hope so. I've watched Andre Agassi, and he's one hell of an athlete. I'd like to see what he's got going on. I personally question his ability to run a gaming establishment, but if Jay-Z can run the Nets, then I guess I shouldn't jump to conclusions, you know? Let's go! Let's go here first! <laughs> and we get some more frat boy Jack Arsery. Nope, skip! Oh, thank the Matrix. We're back to Tim and Tom trying to improve the hotel. They're going out to go scout a lounge singer in person. The Again, for some reason. Are all casino owners this hands-on? I don't think I've ever seen a casino owner on the strip running around and checking into things. This is actually kind of cool, I have to admit. My name is Matt Dusk. Ultimately, their goal is to make it feel like old Vegas. So, enter Matt Dusk, our lounge singer. He sings the theme song for the show and then sings the actual song on the actual show. I'm just a singer. Some say a sinner. This is a good time to note, I really do love the theme song here. It's got a stronger, upbeat, jazzy track to it, and I really do enjoy Dusk's rendition. I think he's a pretty good artist. So there's a brief bit where he asks if he's really going to get the gig, but, you know, he actually sings the theme song to the show. So, yeah, obviously, he's going to make the show. I'm here! I'm here! Love this town. Love this town. Tonight we're partying, you're meeting us, what are we doing? And, uh uh-oh, we got more characters over here. Charles Gorson, a.k.a. Big Chuck, is apparently the high roller here. Apparently, he knows Tim and Tom, which kind of surprises me. Not necessarily because Big Chuck isn't a high roller. In fact, he's actually a spectacular blackjack player that made a big name for himself. Rather, the fact that Tim and Tom are just now becoming big casino executives. I mean, I know word travels fast in Vegas, but damn, even for a reality show, this seems a little set up. Okay, well, let's see how they handle a whale. And just FYI for anyone wondering, him being a whale is not a jab at his weight. Rather, it's what they call big players in the Vegas casino industry. Anyway, let's see if the Golden Nugget can harpoon this killer whale. Maybe that's a lesson for Tim and Tom to learn. We're gonna go take down Tom and Tim. (laughs) Nope, we're back to Matt Dusk with Tim, Tom, and Joe, who I guess is the entertainment director. He kind of came out of nowhere. Joe isn't having it with Matt, or Matt isn't having it with Joe, I can't really tell. And to his credit, Matt lays all his cards on the table and is pretty reasonable about things. Apparently Joe doesn't like this. I sense some manufactured tension for the rest of the episode. Looking at Joe and hearing him speak, he doesn't seem like an unreasonable sort of guy. But I don't know him personally, so I suppose only time will tell. Back to Big Chuck. Big Chuck checks in and goes to goof off, and he doesn't have a host yet. He's a flagged player, evidently, so let's see how security deals with a flagged player. Yeah, Maurice. Hey, Randy, do me a favor. I was uh, just on the phone with VIP, and they notified me we got a, a Charles Orson. Orson? Yeah, we got him, Maurice. We picked him up. He's a professional card counter. I got to get on top of this guy right away. So just make sure you get the information up to me as soon as possible. Okay, buddy. You bet. Turns out that Big Chuck is a card counter, so now we get to see how Tim and Tom handle that, too. Though he's playing craps. They have no problem with this, clearly. He's playing craps after all. They do let him sit down at a card table, though. I guess they're gonna watch him clean him out? Yeah, definitely some manufactured drama. So apparently these guys don't know what to do with a flag player, and instead of booting him right there on the floor, they kind of wander upstairs to the cameras to watch him clean him out, I guess? I don't know, I still don't fully understand the move here, but, you know, I'm no casino executive. On the other hand, though, he is just flagged and not specifically trespassed. So I just kind of question what the word flag means. Maybe you guys in the comment section down below can clarify that for me, as I might have an outdated definition. But no time for that now. We have more frat boy bullshit, literally calling it Pornapalooza. No one looks impressed, including me. Yeah, which coked out executive at Fox decided that we needed to film this? Uh, Anyway, back to Tim and Tom versus their player. They seem to be trying to ID this gambler, who is now drinking, shouting at women, and chasing cocktail waitresses. And somehow Tim and Tom know exactly what he's saying. She says, no, I don't want to go out with you. But I'm a rich guy and I'm tall. I'm 6'8", 250. Yeah, but I don't like you. Tim is an amazing lip reader. And Chuck is sexually harassing all the staff and the patrons, playing various games and chasing around women, and is attempting to buy off these women who are trying to enjoy their vacations. Being big and creepy. I'm offended for Big Chuck at this point. I doubt this is what he was like in real life. No, I'm trying to get turned down a lot. I go through 30, 40 women a day, but that's why I win at the end of that day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage for the first time in Zach's, Matt Dusk. 
Oh yeah, I forgot about the lounge singer. This show has the worst ADHD, and it's actively making mine worse. Anyway, Matt starts singing at the lounge in Zach's bar. He sings a nice song. And drama. Matt. Yeah. Listen, we got a great opportunity. Lieutenant Governor Lorraine Hunt is out in the audience. Apparently the governor is in town, and even though Matt said they won't do covers, Joe makes him do a cover with a random politician. Needless to say, Matt is not pleased. Also, the governor, her husband, and the band are not prepared for this. They bomb as a result. This pleases Joe for some reason, which horrifies me. Thank you, Golden Nugget. Now back to the actual focus of the show. The woman in red who's been teased during all the commercial breaks until now. And now I know why. Big Chuck shows up with a blonde woman, so he decides to diss his date and sexually harass this new woman and her boyfriend. Security still has no desire to do anything about this despite watching him. How have there not been any complaints? So Chuck decides that this woman in red is a prize and asks her boyfriend to bet her. Her boyfriend agrees and this woman doesn't immediately slap both of them and walk away. Now the bosses are going back to surveillance again. They finally figure out that he's just womanizing and not playing blackjack properly. Carmen Sandiego and Discount Big Lebowski apparently are getting on like a house on fire and leave. While Big Lebowski's date is still at the table. But the twist is Carmen Sandiego is trans, which... It's not my girlfriend or anything. Uh, by the way, it's not a woman. That's a man. Oh. I'm serious. Real... I don't know what's going on here anymore. Like her boyfriend backpedals, laughs it off, and calls her a man, which either means he's referring to her being trans in a derogatory way, or alternately she's cross-dressing and still prefers male pronouns because that's how he identifies. I don't know anymore. Oh yeah, and frat boys are doing more bullshit. So apparently there's a rigged game for his virgin buddy to engage in some dubious oral sex with a stranger. Seems legit. No one seems comfortable with this. Even Rob. Okay, the best friend and some awful blonde woman who thinks this is hilarious. They seem comfortable, but otherwise nobody else. Also, apparently Tim and Tom are wandering the halls, listening in on VIP rooms for orgies, apparently. Which they do nothing about because, like, really, why would they? As long as everybody's consenting, who cares? Then Bikini Girl starts taking a liking to Rob until she finds out he's a virgin or whatever. I think the frat boy storyline ends here, and if it doesn't, I really don't care. This was the worst part of the episode. I hope we never see them again. Now the trick's gonna be to get him to talk to girls without having seven or eight pints of liquor in him. Matt Dusk is still angry and talks to Joe. Joe compliments him, then jerks him around when they're talking about improving the show. Pissing contest goes well for Joe, and his jackassery continues, despite the fact that nobody wants anything to do with it, including him. Again, really sensing some manufactured tension here. And finally, back to Big Chuck, who's apparently successfully taken Tina to bed and didn't discover that Tina was an analog TV, if you know what I mean. Big Chuck is not phased, and apparently his girlfriend found this amusing. It's a shame they had to make Big Chuck out to be such a womanizing idiot. He was quite the blackjack player in his time, and unfortunately passed away not too long after the show in 2007. I'm disappointed that they decided to make this his legacy. And that's it for the pilot episode of The Casino. Not sure what to make of this yet. The show has potential for sure. We got to see the counting room, we got to learn a couple surveillance procedures, and learn a bit about casino parlance. That bit was pretty cool. I have no idea how the frat boys worked their way into this. Frankly, it was pretty painful. And don't get me started on poor Big Chuck. I really hope they gave him a script and told him to act like a jackass. I'd be hurt if he was really like that. Oh well, hopefully the next episode can focus on the new unique challenges that Tim and Tom have adjusting to the world of casino ownership. And that's all the time we have for today's video, Spinners and Sharks. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. If you enjoyed today's content and found it either entertaining or informative, I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. All right, next week we'll go ahead and tackle episode two of The Casino because I think I'm going to go ahead and go through all 13 episodes, if at all physically possible. Can't imagine a single thing that can go wrong there. But until next time, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, wishing you all strong hands, and of course, Happy spinning, you guys. Viva, it's just Vegas. Viva, it's just Vegas. Viva, it's just Vegas. Viva.